Okay, and then I'm going to transition to um, just as an exciting of a topic, um, the financial report that Ken is going to offer for all of you, which will include an overview of our audit outcomes. Um, and I just want to extend my appreciation to Ken and his team for the big amount of work it takes to get to this point. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sudek. Uh, First, I, this report has essentially four sections. We were going to uh, quickly go over the audit report, the audit results from our audit, external auditors who are here with us today. Uh, we're going to go over the uh, quarterly, which is also the year-end financial results for the college. Uh, also, the, the required quarterly investment report. And then finally, a brief update on the fall term 2018 enrollment. Uh, to start off with the audit report, um, in your packet uh, that we sent you, there was the uh, audit auditor's presentation. This slide just kind of summarized the highlights of what the auditor was presenting. Uh, it, it talked about the audit process, the results, our highlights, uh, the different governmental accounting, uh, standard board changes that took place, uh, also required audit communications, uh, the grants compliant reports, and then finally, we also note that we also completed the foundation's annual audit and their uh, financial results as well. Uh, from an audit results standpoint, uh, clearly it was a clean opinion or an unmodified opinion, so that was terrific news. Uh, but it was also a large body of work. Uh, the auditors did opinions on the basic financial statements. They prepared a report on our ICCB required grants uh, program. Uh, also, they provided a report on our internal controls over financial reporting and compliance. They did some ICCB required enrollment data audits and other types of audits that ICCB requires and then the, uh, the foundation audit that I mentioned earlier. I think the really big thing that happened this past fiscal year was us adopting our GASB 75 required restatement. Uh, it was almost $60 million that we had to make an adjustment to due to uh, the accounting rules requiring us to put the state and our own local retiree medical insurance plan on our financial statements for the first time. And that's information is detailed in uh, note seven and in note 13. But the bottom line is uh, it was a big change to our financial statements. But as you'll see later on in the report, uh, we're still a very healthy financial statement. We still meet the board's uh, reserve expectations. And so while it's an accounting adjustment and while there's some large numbers moving, we're still in very good financial shape. And I think the last slide for the, the audit portion of the presentation, just to give a brief overview of the required communications, uh, where the auditors are noting there's no significant issues in countering during the audit. And they also note that during the internal control points, there was no control deficiencies, and we've corrected all the prior year adjustments. So it was really a very good report. And, and I just want to thank John Peters and Katie Berry, the, the audit partner and the, and the audit manager who is here, and obviously Connie Kravitz and her team did a really Herculean effort to really get through all this work in a very short amount of time so we could meet our state's uh, filing requirements, which I think the board acts on a little bit later on the agenda when you approve us following the reports with the state. And, Publishing the results in the newspaper. Is there any questions from the board based on the audit before I move on? It's a real quick one on page seven. Uh, the fund balance has a percentage of expenditures and transfers 2018 37 percent, 2017 41 percent. Is that the GASB 75 difference? Uh, no, that's that's basically our, our percentage as it relates to our operating spending. So it's our fund balance as it relates to operating spending. And as you can see, our policy requires 25 percent. And um, last year we were at 41%, and with that audit adjustment, we're still at a healthy 37% level. But that's why it dropped. Correct. Essentially, because yes. of the, the SB 75. Okay. Correct. Awesome. So, no more questions on the audit. I'll then move on to the exception. And then thanks, John and Katie, for being here. We really appreciate it. Uh, in terms of our financial results, uh, uh, you know, we we, uh, we included the late state grant from FY 2017 into the FY 2018 uh, financial statement. So when we were awarded uh, $6.6 .6 million in early July from the state for the prior year, we were required to record that in this year's financial statement. So we did that. We still achieved uh, terrific results with operating revenues that were greater than the spending. We note that there's a positive $9.1 million number that we'll be working on through the board retreat planning process and our budget development process to come, you know, make sure that we're making strategic recommendations on how to use those one-time resources. Uh, tuition revenues were slightly below what we budgeted, but uh, not in a significant way. We did want to point out this year that in the auxiliary funds, we were seeing a declining net income position due to the success of our open education resources program. More and more faculty using uh, less costly curriculum for our students. It's eating into the income our bookstore was making. But that's certainly a really good result when you think about it. We, that's the kind of result we kind of want to have happen. 
Uh, we already talked about the negative impact of the OPEB uh, issue on our financial statements, so we've, we've covered that. But that's just a quick highlight. Uh, here's the slide that just briefly talks about the state appropriation that we brought forward. Here we're noting that we received all the money that the state had promised us. So at the time, we didn't think the state had the money to actually pay us. So that's terrific news. We've got it. It's been booked, and it's, it's been it's a good work. In terms of our variances, uh, you know, our budgets uh, were in line. We, you know, spending is uh, below uh, our revenues. Uh, and in terms of the revenues themselves, you can see here uh, we, we, we earned more state grants or, or credit hour grants were larger than we had expected, so that was positive. And again, just a slight negative impact on tuition and fees. And then in terms of spending, uh, we're spending below what was expected salaries and contractual services and travel, things like that were all below budget, so those are all very positive numbers. Though I know Dr. Suddick in her presentation uh, at the Committee of the Whole, as we look at our investments going forward, she is in fact concerned that we have this culture of concern and maybe we are being a little bit too tight with our financial controls or our, our spending concerns. And so going forward, we'll have to look hard to make sure we're in investing the dollars that the board are giving us in, in positive and in new creative ways going forward. Uh, and then this last slide here is just a summary of all the funds that you'll see in the financial statements, uh, the revenues, expenditures, and that. Uh, we're more than just the operating funds. We have these other required funds that are, you know, serve things like our auditing purposes or for insurance reserves. And then uh, finally, uh, the board already addressed some of the one-time monies in the prior year with our green fund tr approval. You also authorized the, the 17 surplus of 5.5 million. And you also gave us authority to make investments on the late state grants of the 6.6. .6. So that really just leaves us the remaining 9.1 that we'll be working on at the board retreat in the fall and the upcoming February uh, work sessions. And then that brings me to the quarterly investment report. Um, uh, there's a lot of information we get from our professional financial advisors, PFM Inc. Uh, PFM uh, not only does a terrific <coughs> job preparing quality quarterly reports, it has all the required information that the board needs to assess how well we're doing, but they give us good insight as to where the market's going. Here in this quarter's report, they note that there's a continued strong pace of economic activity. Uh, they're also noting to the board that we're in compliance with state statutes and our board policy and that the future outlook is a little bit murky with the uh, current trade wars on the horizon, but uh, uh, we'll certainly manage our way through that. And then these next two slides are just a summary of our investments. You'll see that we have three main uh, groupings of funds, and you can see they're invested across safe ranges of fixed income securities, all across a diverse group of uh, industrial sectors, and that the durations of the various portfolios are in line with the board's uh, investment policy objectives. Also, this is just a, che a compliance checklist that they provide each quarter to note that we're in full compliance with board policy and state statute. Any questions at this point as it relates to either the financial results of the quarterly investment report? Yeah. Can you go back to the revenues? Sure. Mm -hmm. so property tax. Could have the uh, property tax changed there? Yeah, that's pretty much on track. I mean, Nani, can you give us a little insight as to that uh, the slight dip from what we were expecting? I'm assuming it's either new property the, assumptions. Are you expecting? Are you wanting uh, the why we're under, or why we went from 64.8 to 66? Uh, that's what I'm wondering. Okay. Um, so the consumer price index um, at the end of last year increased. Um, so we had been before the past two years at 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and now we're at 2.1. Um, so we've been able to increase the tax levy a little bit because of that. And then I think we had one or two um, TIFs that were um, defunct, and we went ahead and grabbed those as well. And then also that there's been a lot of new, um, a lot of new um, uh, property. property that's been going on to the books. Yeah, that's right. It's been true. increasing, and we'll be talking about that in the October board meeting. Um, where we bring our um, estimated tax levy, and then you approve that in November. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking you had some new uh, homes that are being built that are coming under the tax levy. Yeah, it's it's it had been around 100 million, and now it's 148, 160. So it's it's increased pretty significantly. Yeah, coming um, out of the Great Recession, it's yeah, pretty much it's done with with what had happened with uh, 2008. So we're we're back in line. Mm -hmm. I'm curious of where that growth is. We can, we can research that and bring yeah, it to the next meeting. Yeah, we're going to pay attention tonight, but where is that occurring? Yeah. 
and our levy captured all the increase for this last year? It did. Yep. Yeah. And we're looking at the same thing as far as this year then too. Right. And I think the CPI is going to go up again. Yeah. Thank you. So that brings me to the last section of our presentation tonight. That's just a brief update on the uh, fall term enrollment trends. We know the revenue producing unrestricted credit hours were down about 1.9% this fall term. Our budget assumed uh, a minus 1.8%, so it's really just a very minor loss. And we know in this year's budget, we are getting more state aid than we had budgeted for, uh, so we're, we're certainly on track uh, financially. And that the uh, ex expected additional state funding about budget plan plus our whatever uh, cost controls that the academic side does as we, as our class sizes are shrinking, we, we, we hire less staff and we spend less on materials. So there's a natural variable cost change that takes place when variable revenue changes as well. Excuse uh, me, Ken, can you give us just an estimate or maybe Lori of the um, statewide average for decline in enrollment this year? I have a slide time? coming up that shows oh, sorry, that. Excuse me, yeah. thank you. Uh, and then this is just why I was looking at the five years of our unrestricted credit hour trend, our, our budget forecast, the actual, we are using it very close to that line. In fact, Connie had to exaggerate the chart just to make those lines separate a little bit. So we do a really good every, uh, job every year budgeting close to what we ultimately get. And then uh, just from looking at summer term to f uh, fall term for this fiscal year compared to last year, we know that we saw that uh, a 1.9% drop versus a 1.8% uh, uh, plan. Uh, in, in the FY18, this was my mathematical error on this slide. It was the actual was actually a minus 1.3%, uh, uh, I believe, yeah. Connie. So we, we our, our actual uh, actual uh, loss in the prior fiscal year to budget was just about the same. Um, so that just gives you a perspective of the summer to fall. Uh, those two terms as they you know compare to the prior year and then to your question here's a, a comparison of our peers uh, Karen Lambert was able to get a survey of our of our colleagues so I know this is survey results versus the actual ICCB data but it at least gives us a great indication of what we're likely to see from our peers and, and, it's, and I unfortunately I sorted it from the lowest to the, the highest but it means you can see towards the top the College of the Pages and Marines our, our their credit hour changes are are a little bit more severe than ours. But we do see that the Elgins and McHenry did in fact do a little bit better than us. So we weren't the, while we weren't the best, we were certainly not the worst in that pack. <laughs> and then Sean gave me some data. When we look at the, our enrollments over a longer period of time, he was knowing, for example, headcount when we compare uh, community college enrollment uh, from 2013 at 691,000 students, back to 2017 it's dropped to 553,000 students. Statewide, that drop's been about 20% versus us, slightly below that statewide average. Though he did note that there was two community colleges that appear to have didn't see uh, a decline during that time frame. But anyway, we're hoping this information will give the, the board a sense of how we're doing from an enrollment perspective. I know Dr. Stuck, you had a much more comprehensive uh, discussion for them, and uh, I'm sure we'll go into that in more detail in the upcoming retreat. Any questions? Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're doing a good job, Ken. We appreciate it. And thanks to everybody that helped, Ken. And uh, it's uh, it's gratifying to see good numbers like this. Well, thank you, Dr. Suddick.